Um, the plane is always rotating around its center of gravity. How do you find the center of gravity? On a small object like this, you can just spin it. And that center of spin, of course, is the center of gravity. And the basic way a paper airplane works is that you have less lifting surface in front of the center of gravity and more lifting surface behind the center of gravity so that the plane naturally will want to nose over so that it can gain speed that it's losing to drag. Every airplane is always losing a little bit of speed to drag and uh, paper airplanes are no exception. With powered planes, of course, you just step on the gas. But gliders, you have to build in this way to gain speed. You're trading height for speed. So the nose tilts down, you get a little gravity assist. And when you pick up just the right amount of speed, you'll have a little bit of upward bend back here and when it goes just fast enough, the air will bounce off of that, pushing the tail down, which lifts the nose up, and now you're really flying. It's automatically heading toward the ground. And so that's, you know, you could take advantage of that um, with this sort of squashed arc idea. Uh, that's the idea behind that particular flight. The plane might naturally do that, or if you add just a little bit of down elevator, it'll, it'll accentuate that. So this is another sort of loop idea where you could throw it up and it would naturally curve down and crash. Is it heading back toward the wall? Not as nicely as the boomerang plane, but um, just clearing the wall and, and hitting the ground and maybe staying in that 30 point zone, probably in the 20 point zone if you slide a little bit. So this is not a terrible idea. Um, easier probably to do than the loop. The plane wants to do that anyway. With a little bit of help, you know, it'll fly out and, and nose over. Um, and if you got 20 points, that's not bad. Adjusting. So the basic idea with paper airplanes is that whatever you do to the tail feathers happens to the nose because it's rotating around that center of gravity. So if I bend this up, air bounces off of those uh, little bends and push the tail down and the nose goes up, rotating around the center of gravity. In the same way, if I bend those down, now the tail gets pushed up because the air is bouncing off of that, pushing the tail up and the nose goes down. Same thing with right and left. What you'll want to adjust, uh, and, and by the way, when you fold a plane and throw it, it it's probably going to turn right or left. And so what you want to do to correct that is make an adjustment right here where the body of the plane connects to the wings. So let's say that I want to get my plane to turn to the right. I would make a bend to the right. And just like up and down elevator, air will hit that, push the tail to the left, and that moves the nose to the right. So now you've got control over what aerodynamicists call pitch, like with an elevator adjustment. Uh, aerodynamicists call this yaw. I still don't know why that's called yaw, <laughs> but that's a rudder control. You control yaw with rudder. And then um, you'll notice something here with the way that the wings are attached to the body of the plane. Uh, that's called positive dihedral angle. And what that does is help rock the plane back to neutral. So if you've got a paper airplane where the wings are sloping upward like this, and if you throw it leaned over, it's almost like having a weight on the end of a string. That weight from the body of the plane will just rock the plane back to neutral uh, the lifting surface is up over where that weight is, and so the plane swings back to neutral. Much easier to keep it flying straight, and, and it'll be much more forgiving if your launcher is just a little bit tilted one way or the other. And so this is, this is a way to protect yourself against, you know, kind of a sketchy launch. Uh, and so uh, with that, we've got all three axes of rotation. We've got pitch, we've got yaw, and we're controlling roll with this positive dihedral. And so what I would suggest is having one person on your team really become the paper airplane expert. Uh, if you've not folded a lot of paper airplanes, you're gonna have to get fluent with how that works <laughs> real quick. And everybody on the team doesn't need to do that. You really just need one person who's great at folding and adjusting. Uh, and then you know the, the rest of the team can kind of help out with the, with the testing if need be. Um, so that's... Uh, my advice is to just designate one person. Hey, here's your aerodynamicist guy. Here's your paper airplane guy or gal. 
grabber or your notch or whatever, the, the closer you get to the center of gravity, and, it, and again, you know, just give the plane a spin and you can see where the center of gravity is. So if you're pushing against the center of gravity, the plane will go right where you're pushing it. If I start pushing it from back here, I'm creating a lever. Uh, grabbing it in front of the center of gravity will work as well. But if you're behind the center of gravity, you're definitely going to cause problems. So um, if you're, um, this would be, this is the worst place in my opinion to try to uh, shove the plane um, forward of the center of gravity or right on, right on the center of gravity is probably the best place. So that's, that's a great question. The biggest mistake you can make is not learning how to adjust your plane. Uh, that's, you know, the, anybody can fold a good paper airplane. It's that fine tuning of the plane that's going to be make or break in this. Um, no matter what launcher you decide on, uh, no matter what trajectory you decide on, it, the fine tuning of the plane is going to be critical. Uh, and so whoever your plane master is, your plane meister, um, just getting really fluent with how to get the best out of whatever design you choose to go with. And, you know, there's a lot of options on designs. And I would just choose something that's fairly easy to fold, that is a solid design. Uh, this Nakamura lock I was showing is, is good. Uh, the Phoenix is good. My world record design, the easy version with a lock on it, really solid design. So I would go with something that's easy to repeat. You can do a lot of, so you can practice um, adjusting, getting the plane to do exactly what you want to do on cue. Um, and if you can get to that point, even before you put it in the launcher, get to that point. Uh, that's that's going to get you head and shoulders above everybody else who's just like, you know, rip, Grip it and rip it. That's that, that's a recipe for disaster. <laughs> You're in ten point land or or no point land. Yeah, that's a really big deal. On World Record Day, I showed up with twenty seven planes and picked the ones that the three that were flying best. And so, you guys have the luxury of being able to fold planes ahead of time. Uh, so I would totally take advantage of that. Show up with a lot of planes. That's not going to hurt you. Too few planes will definitely hurt you.